Right, hello everyone. Uh, thanks for coming to watch this. I just wanted to talk a little bit today about um, cheap Chinese-made saxophones. They seem to be the talk of the town in the saxophone playing community, or at least they have been lately. So, as a player with about nine years experience, um, I'm going to discuss how I feel about them in terms of build quality and sound, intonation, playability, how they hold up to more expensive models. Um, I've got 12 instruments in total, and I believe nine of them were manufactured in China. Straighten up there, you. Um, and one of them I've had for about seven years, so I'm going to discuss how I, how I feel about how the instrument performs now, um, and how it's held up compared to how it was when I first got my hands on it. The others are all relatively new, and they came from a few different places, but most of them came from sax.co.uk um, in England, or England, the UK, whatever it is. I don't know my geography. Is that geography? Doesn't matter. Um, but yeah, so I, we're going to discuss that, and I'm going to uh, let you have a little listen to what each of them sound like, and then I'm going to discuss um, how I feel about them. So thanks for coming to watch this. I hope this is of, of interest to you. And I hope the information you, you get here will help you make an informed decision on whether or not one of these instruments is worth your money. So, let's get to it. Thank you. 
Right then, so now that you've gotten to enjoy my uh, somewhat mediocre saxophoning skills, saxophoning skills? Good job, Vince. <clears throat> Now that you've gotten to enjoy my mediocre skills at playing the saxophone, there we go, get it right way around. Um, we're going to talk a little bit about how good these instruments are put together, how they play, as a player, if the experience is, is a pleasure or if I find it difficult, um, intonation, usability, who I'd recommend it for, all that good stuff. So let's just get right in. So this soprano um, cost me about... 400 bucks brand new off Amazon with uh, came with a case and a mouthpiece and a reed uh, strap the whole the whole uh, the whole thing um, I've had it for about five years and I play it somewhat regularly soprano is the least often instrument that I play the least common instrument that I play I should say um, as you heard in that video there and I'm, I've picked this one just because it's the easiest to get in the frame out of, out of the five that I just showed you but after five years of relatively frequent use it still looks it looks just like it did the day that i got it so and, and i mean it's, it's not just gold plated it's got gold lacquered uh, key or gold plated keys i'm sorry um with fake mother of pearl key touches and a uh, black nickel body with a laser i don't know if you could see it but a laser engraved bell so it's certainly nothing crazy expensive or fancy but i mean for a soprano sax at this price it certainly looks nice and what I'm saying about this will, for the most part, translate to all of them. I'm just using the Soprano because for this subject, it's the easiest one to use because I can get it in frame. Um, so in terms of looks and the finish, at least in my experience, all of my instruments have held up relatively well. Um, the lacquer on my, my baritone sax, which is the older one, that one's about seven, maybe eight years old, it's starting to go a little bit, but I mean, I've seen top of the line Selmers and Yanagasawas and whatnot and Yamahas with the same thing. The finish isn't going to last forever, but when it's lacquered like that, but in terms of plated, because this instrument's not lacquered, it's completely plated, the, in or the finish still holds up just as it did the day that I had it. It looks pretty much exactly the same as the day that I got it, which I really appreciate. Okay, so as I just said, um, my baritone saxophone is by far the oldest uh, Chinese-made horn that I have. Out of the 12 instruments that I have, this was the second one that I got, and the first Chinese-made uh, horn that I ever got. I've had it about eight years, roughly, and I, I've got to say, um, it, it, it's held up pretty well. Um, it's not perfect. The register mechanism could use a bit of tweaking. But, I mean, what do you expect for an $1,800 baritone sax? Apart from that, though, and when I say tweaking, I just, like, the same issue that I had with the soprano is, like, sometimes I have to give the register key a little tiny bit more pressure than I'd like. But it still works. And apart from that, everything is still in good working order on it. Most of the pads still look brand new. And I use this instrument, unlike the soprano, I use this thing a lot, all the time. This is probably my my main horn, well maybe my second main horn, um, but the only keys that really are starting to be on their way are the, um, you're not going to be able to see it, but these keys up top, the palm keys and the high F sharp. Um, <laughs> uh, those are the only real keys that, or not keys, the only real pads that are almost in need of work, but I mean for almost a decade of playing and I still haven't needed to service this instrument, I haven't had to service this thing once. I could have, but it still worked. It still plays almost just like the day that I got it. Um, what you heard me play earlier on this instrument didn't require a whole lot more effort than it took when I first got the instrument. And as you saw, I have a bass sax as well. That instrument is brand new. I had that thing less than a year, and I haven't used it a whole lot because it's so unwieldy, but that means that it's in very new condition. And Playing the two side by side, there's very little, if any, discernible difference between the two. This one might take a little bit more air um, to get some of the bottom notes to come out with pop, but I think that's just because I'm using um, a harder, or I'm sorry, a, yeah, a harder reed on this on this instrument um, with a bigger chamber mouthpiece than I do on the bass. Um, well, that's kind of a lie. I use the same mouthpiece usually, but I use a different reed. I use a two reed on the bass and a, a three on the baritone sax. 
So that might, that probably is the reason for that. But either way, I, I don't notice much of any difference. And that instrument's less than a year old. The bass is just sitting to my left here. Um, whereas this baritone sax is approaching a decade, another year and a half or so, and I'll have had this thing for a decade. I've played this instrument outside in minus 40 degrees Celsius weather, and it holds up great. Um, it's not perfect. It's not going to do as well as a Yamaha or a Yanni or a Selmer. But if you're on a budget and you're looking to get your hands on a baritone sax, I, like, I, I mean, I can't tell you what to spend your money on, but I don't think it's a bad investment if you want to try for one of these. Make sure you get from a reputable salesperson, though. Don't go buy from some really sketchy-looking eBay website. I wouldn't recommend that. Um, I would suggest sax.co.uk. Um, they have a brand called Sakusu. That's what, but this is not a Sakusu. I'm getting a Sakusu baritone soon, but the alto, tenor, and bass sax that you heard earlier, those are all Sakusus. Um, and I've got several Sakusu saxophones, more than just the three that you saw, and they all play very well. Um, and they played really, really good right out of the box. I didn't have to do any tweaking to them, and that's what we're going to talk about in a second, so I'll leave that at that. But um, having had this instrument for many, many years and put it through the ringer more than a few times, I'm extremely impressed and satisfied with how well it has held up. Um, I'm really, really happy with it. I didn't think it was going to last this long. And the fact that I haven't needed to service it yet, and it still plays more or less like the day I got it, is really, really impressive. Um, I learned on a Yamaha baritone sax, and there are some minor intonation differences, and some of the mechanisms on the more expensive horn feels a little bit more solid, but this certainly doesn't feel cheap. It just doesn't feel as um, rigid as the more expensive horns. The only thing about this instrument that I don't like is um, the fact that the lacquer is starting to kind of give. But, I mean, again, what do you expect to happen with a saxophone that's as old as this one is? I've seen lots of saxophones where the lacquer has completely worn off on a more expensive horn. Sure, it might last a little longer, but I didn't buy this instrument for the finish. I bought it because it was a baritone sax that I could afford. And apart from those small, minor things... I'm very, very happy with this saxophone, and I imagine my other saxophones, when they reach the age of this one, will hold up very, very nicely. So that's what I've got to say about that. Now we're going to talk about how they perform when you first get your hands on them. Alrighty, so when it comes to how these instruments perform right out of the box, um, the, ba the bass is actually the newest one that I have, but I don't feel like having that sitting on my lap here, so I'm just going to use the second newest, which is this tenor. Um, I have, how many of these do I have? I've got this one, that 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 one, and those two, yeah, so, yeah, so yeah, I'm, I'm right, yeah, nine, I'm sorry, I already said this earlier, nine um, of these instruments, and of the nine, nine out of nine played pretty well, perfectly, right out of the, right out of the box in terms of being able to get a sound and all the mechanisms working properly. Um, none of them had any leaks in them. None of them needed any tweaking. Well, I mean, the my ones my curved soprano could have used a little tiny bit of a spring increase, like a spring adjust, but that was a very very easy thing to fix. That took all of two seconds to fix that, um, and it wasn't even that big of a deal. I didn't need to do it. I just did it because I wanted to feel like I was a professional. Um, but apart from that, like they've all played pretty well, perfect right out of the gate. I haven't had to take any of them to any repair shops. Now, I, I need to stress this. I am not a professional player. If you're a professional player or you need your instrument to perform at the same level as a professional horn, but you don't have the money for one, I hate to tell you this, but that's just not going to happen realistically. It, you'll get close, but it's not, it's not going to quite get you there. It'll be close, though. Um, if you have the money and the time, I, I wouldn't say it's a bad idea to put it before a repairman just to have them do a little inspection and maybe tweak it a little bit. But if you're just getting it to practice and learn, um, or even just have a pretty showpiece or something, I don't think it's a, a huge deal, honestly. Like, I mean, this tenor, it feels just as solid as a Yamaha to me. Maybe the low B flat might be a little light on the press, but it's apart from that, like. It, these are great saxophones to use, and this is a Sakusu. 
Um, I'll leave a link to their website in the description below if you're curious. Um, but I mean, I really can't elaborate on that on that any further. All of the instruments I've gotten have played pretty damn good right out of the gate, um, and they've all held up up until now. Even the eight and a half year old baritone sax, which is actually the cheapest value for money that I have. Oh, maybe not quite, but close. Um, I don't know what else to say to that. You wouldn't think that a $700 tenor sax would be as good as a, uh, a three or four thousand um, dollar Yamaha or Yanagasawa, but the reality is, apart from minor piss off, minor intonation problems, which are relatively easy to correct with your embouchure, and maybe a little bit of lightness in the springs in a couple of places, I have no complaints. The way I look at it is you get 95% of the performance for 5% of the price. And to me, that's a pretty fair deal. So will they play right out of the box? Well, just like anything, I certainly can't guarantee anything. But in my experience, we're 9 for 9, really. They've all worked pretty well just as I needed them to work right out of the box. With a little tiny bit of tuning and getting used to them, um, you can play them in tune without yeah. any trouble as long as you're a good player. So. That's what I've got to say on that. Let's move on to the next subject. Now, when it comes to the mechanisms on the instruments, that kind of depends on a few things. Obviously, how well you take care of the instrument is going to matter, but that's going to matter with any instrument. I will go ahead and say, though, that these need a lot more babying than a more expensive horn. Um, these are not anywhere near as durable. The metal is usually a little bit softer, and they're a lot easier to damage. Um, this soprano sax has been all across Canada, <laughs> and as a result, the octave mechanism is a little bit slow to respond, which means that a lot of the time I find myself not really having use of the octave mechanism when I need it for fast passages, which means that I'm relying exclusively on my embouchure. However, most people that are going to be buying one of these, like students or beginners or, or whatever, people that aren't super high-end professional players, um, because I'm not a high-end professional player, which is why I have this. Um, most of them aren't going to be doing quite that amount of traveling with their instrument. And I, I, like, I don't think that they would have this problem. Um, I'm also not a, a great soprano sax player, so like, I'm not really one to speak on the playability of a soprano saxophone specifically. But just that, that's really the only thing. Is the octave mechanism's a little teeny tiny bit stiff, but it still works. Like uh, you can't see it, but as I'm going between the G and the A, um, the pips are moving as they should. But I just have to press really, really hard on the register key, and that might even, now that I think about it, that might just be an issue with the actual key. I just might need to rebend the key a little bit, and that might solve that problem. Um, but I mean, apart from that, that's that's really it. They're, I've had this thing for five, almost six years, and everything works pretty much the way it did the day I got it, except for what we just talked about. Um, the finish is great when it comes to plated instruments, and yeah, I mean, it's a, it's a good saxophone. If you want to get into playing soprano, for example, um, I, I certainly don't think that it's a bad idea to get one of these. It's not exactly an expensive piece of equipment. So that's what I have to say about the playability of the instruments. So let's move on to the next bit. So who are these instruments for? They're probably not for professional uh, saxophone players that are trying to make a full-time legitimate living out of their instruments. If you're, if you're going to go that route, I would suggest something higher quality. It's, if you're going to make a living out of it, it's, it's worth the investment to spend a little bit more and get something a little bit better quality. Um, you don't have to go all the way to the top, at, like right away, and get the most expensive horns on the market. But if, if your intention is to try and get into a prestigious university or get into a big uh, jazz band or concert band type thing that pays, um, even even as good as these might be, it's not going to look particularly great when you show up with a Chinese saxophone. That it, I don't like it, but that's just the way it is. If you show up with something that isn't considered the best of the best, you're going to be judged a little bit more harshly. And sometimes that might mean the difference between getting in or not. So as sad as that is to say, if you want to be a professional and you're in the position to try and take that next step, 
I don't think these are the way to go. But for everybody else, for hobbyists like myself, students, even even teachers, if you're a teacher and you want to provide your students with their own instrument to use while they're with you, these aren't a bad way to way to go. This alto sax was like five or six hundred dollars, I think it was. It might have been, might have been a bit more than that, but it wasn't particularly expensive um, for an alto sax that plays as good as this. <laughs> and it looks pretty damn good, too. I don't know if you can really tell, but this is a midnight black finish, and it's got an absolutely stunning um, laser engraving on the bell. And even up the side of the body. Beautiful, beautiful saxophone. I love playing this saxophone. But, um, yeah, I mean, any, anybody that's not a high-end professional, like if you're just playing like gigs on the weekend or something at bars, this you could easily get by with these. When I say professionals, I'm talking like people that are performing in like across the world, making a full-time living, what am I saying? A full-time living as professional high-end jazz or concert saxophonists. If you're just playing gigs at the bar or busking, you these are fine. You don't need to go out and spend your life savings on a saxophone <laughs> um, to, to be a busker or to play at the bar. It just You just don't need it. And usually people that are in that position don't want to spend that kind of money. This is a damn good way to do it. I mean, that's all I can really say to that. If you're not, I keep repeating myself, but if you're not a super high-end professional, these are a great tool to have. Um, and it's kind of nice to be able to have backups too. Like I've got three altos, um, so if one of them does have problems, I, ha I can afford to have two others. Whereas like somebody that put their life and soul into getting themselves a Selmer Mark VI, they may very well not have the money to get a second one. So if their horn goes down for any reason, they don't have a horn now until they can get another one. Me. I could drop this one off a cliff by mistake, and as sad as I'll be, I have two others that will do the job just fine until I can replace this one. So that's certainly something to keep in mind. Um, so that's really all I have to say on the instruments themselves. I hope that's been of interest. Before we, uh, we finish up here, I'm going to talk a little bit about where to buy these types of instruments from, because you do need to be kind of careful. So let's, let's have a chat about that. So this will be the last bit of this video, um, where to get your saxophone. I know it might be really tempting to go on eBay and get one of those uh, horns that's like two or three hundred dollars and looks amazing in the photos. If you're going to do that, you need to do a lot of fact checking and research before you do it. If you because you, you might get scammed, and if even if you get the instrument, it might be a dud. It might not work very well, and with a lot of these places, the customer service isn't really a big concern of theirs. They already got your money. They don't really care at that point. Um, so <laughs> if you're going to do that, you need to make sure that the seller is reputable and has a good reputation, has lots of reviews. Like I'm talking hundreds to thousands of reviews, and most of them need to be good reviews. Um, and if you're going to buy a specific product, look and see how many of them have been sold and look and see if it has any reviews. If you're going to go the eBay route, that's really the only way to do it. Um, you can get some saxophones on Amazon, but they're kind of hit or miss as to whether or not they're going to be in decent shape when you get them. Um, but if you can find a reputable sailor, or sailor, seller, what the hell, um, then that's definitely the way to go. Like sax.co.uk, I know I've talked about them a few times, but they're damn good. They're, they have good customer service. Um, I'm talking like within 24 hours to 48 hours, usually I have an answer to my question if I have a question. Their prices are fair, they ship anywhere in the world, um, and they've got everything from Soprillo all the way up to the mighty Contrabass. Um, and my bass saxophone that you just saw earlier I got that instrument for not even 8,000 Canadian. I think it was like 7,300 Canadian, um, including shipping and taxes and everything. That was the final price from them. And a bass saxophone, if you're not familiar, will normally run you twenty-five to thirty-five thousand dollars. That one wasn't even eight, and it, it, it plays pretty well. There are some minor problems with it with an instrument that size when it's built. Um, to, for that price point, you are going to have to give up some things, like the, the center D, the middle D, fourth line D, whatever you want to call it. That can be a little bit fuzzy. Um, 
but that's relatively easy to work around. It's, it's not too difficult to kind of find your way around that. I've gotten around that by just not using the register key when I play that note, and that completely solves that problem 100%. The problem is non-existent after that point. But other than that, it's, it's, it's a decent instrument. I'm not a, I'm not a bass saxophone player. I have a bass saxophone, but I'm not a bass saxophone player. So I can't really speak to how amazing that instrument is. I'm sure uh, in the hands of a great bass saxophone player, um, it would sound even better than it does with me. And I like to think I sound pretty good. However, I am a tenor saxophone player, and I do have the Sakusu tenor saxophone. And I could say that that instrument, which is the one that you saw earlier, absolutely incredible. Incredible, incredible instrument. Great value for money. I would absolutely recommend it for anybody short of a full-time touring professional. Anyone that's not a full-time touring professional, get yourself a Sakusu tenor sax. Um, they're built decent. Um, they look really nice. The mechanics are good on them. The intonation's pretty good. It's not perfect, but it's never going to be perfect. Um, and I really couldn't recommend the Sakusus enough. You know, I know I sound like I'm really talking them up, but I am, because if you're going to spend your money on a saxophone and you want to learn, particularly if you want to learn and you don't know what you're doing, go to sax.co.uk. Um, they have just about everything you could think of. I've yet to see another saxophone um, seller anywhere in the world that can match what they have. And their wealth of information is pretty well unrivaled as far as I can tell. So. Um, that, that's where I would go to buy my saxophone if you're asking for a specific place. But if you don't want to go there for whatever reason, just please do your research on your seller. Make sure that you pay attention to what you're buying. Read the descriptions. If you can get in contact with the seller, do it. And if it seems sketchy, don't give them your money. It's not worth the risk. I know it might be really, really tempting to buy a gorgeous black nickel-plated baritone sax with silver-plated keys and like gorgeous uh, rainbow-colored mother-of-pearl key touches, but at the same time, if you get that instrument, it doesn't work very well, you're not going to be very happy. So that's what I've got to say to that, and I don't really think I have anything else to say, so I, I hope you've enjoyed this video. I hope it's been of interest to you, and I hope it can help you make a good, informed decision. So good luck. Uh, if you're new, Welcome to the saxophone playing world. It's a wonderful world, and I think you'll have a great time. Um, but, yeah, are they worth it? I think so. I think that the Chinese saxophones are worth it. They didn't used to be, but I think they are now. So that's all I've got to say to that. Have a great day, and good luck to you. <laughs>